Now I'm going to give you all a choice. I'm going to make another flavor, and it's up to you. Uh, we're going to use Butterfinger, the candy bars, and we can either make Butterfinger ice cream or Butterfinger cream ice. Uh, ice cream. Now, who gave God the vote? I don't know. So just by a show of hands, do we want to make Butterfinger ice cream or do we want to make Butterfinger cream ice? Cream ice it is. Sorry, Mike. So what I've done is, uh, we have any more bladders here? Yes, I do. Uh, well, I only need... Uh, <laughs> you want me to do a <laughs> quick surgery? And <laughs> I came in this morning with Everybody loves Butterfinger it. bars. Yeah. Is it good? And I cut them up and froze them. And this is them. And the reason we did that is so that we can make Butterfinger bar dust. So we'll put some in here. See, I said some. <laughs> I found the other half. Where'd he go? I found the other half of bladder. Yeah, I know. It's under the... Uh, it's, <laughs> it's in the refrigerator. Yeah, all leaked out. Yeah. That's now, this will be loud for a second. Boy, I'm a mess. And the reason we're doing this is, have you ever ordered Snickers ice cream in a store and you get vanilla ice cream with pizza Snickers bar in it? That's not Snickers ice cream. So this will taste like the ice, like the candy bar. And it's not, and you can do it with any candy bar. Kit Kat, Snickers. And you can hear when it's done, right? You, you know that there's no more big pieces in there. Now, I will take credit for this invention, not the machine, but doing it this way. When I first started, I wanted to make Milky Way ice cream. So I took the Milky Way bars on the stove and heated them up slowly until they were all dissolved. Then I had a big kettle of melted Milky Way bars and uh, I added that to the batch freezer after it cooled off and made great ice cream. But then you're faced with Snicker bars and you're faced with, uh, you know, Kit Kat bars and uh, Baby Ruth's, all the candy bars, and you can't simply melt them on the stove. It's an arduous process anyway. So I came up with the goal was to get, see these? If everything in the world is molecules, then you want as much of this to touch the cream as possible and dissolve so that the flavor, unlike a lot of people, probably Steve included, I don't care what my ice cream looks like. I don't care at all. I don't decorate the tops and none of that stuff. I care about what it tastes like and how bold the flavor is, how sweet it is, and uh, how refreshing it is. That's what I care about. Don't worry about it. So, now before you asked about formulas, well, here's a universal formula for cream ice. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. You're not writing. Why aren't you writing? You know this already? Three, two, one. Why aren't you writing? No pen. No pen? There's a pen right there on the floor. And she will kick it to you. Look at that, kicks it to you. So it's three, two, one for any cream ice in the world. Three quarts of water, two pounds of sugar. What's the other thing? One what? Uh, one quart of mix. 
three quarts of water, two pounds of sugar, one quart of mix, and then whatever flavor you want. Today it's going to be baby uh, Butterfinger. <laughs> Butterfinger. So what I say, three quarts of water? That's all right. <laughs> You're so helpful today. I don't have my assistant, so I have to do something. Three quarts of water. I'll tell you what you can do. Yeah? You give me two pounds of sugar. Uh, that's not in my contract. I didn't think so. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll get it for you right away. So three quarts of water. two pounds of sugar, and one quart of mix. Well, good, good question. That means you're paying attention. I heard there's a test at the end. Speaking of tests, uh, Monday I have to take my food manager's test. Uh, and uh, I haven't taken one in five years, six years. So obviously I have to study and uh, not happy about it. Uh, you don't want to fail that because no. you look like a real yo in front of the whole class who's, you know, Olive Garden employees are there and macaroni grill and all this stuff. So Monday I have to take it. I haven't opened the book yet. <laughs> Most of it's common sense. I think so. And the last time I got 84, which was good. I was happy. Now, they give a class two hours before the test. And I'm sure they give you all the answers. <laughs> so uh, I should have done that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just said the online one took about an hour to go through the course and you took the test. Yeah, so and got the license, you got to there you go. They have it online so yeah, you can cheat? The manager? Oh, no, because it's proctored. Yeah. How is that? How is that done? They have through your camera. So oh, you through your, your camera. Okay. And, you know, okay. Oh, brother. You, you can't show the uh, off to the side the six chefs that you hired to assist you. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So now we're going to turn the machine on before we add the sugar. Now somebody said, "How much of this do we add?" Right. You said that. I'll let you know in a minute. Uh, let's put this on. Six and a half. But if we're shipping it to you outside the state of Florida, there is no sales tax. It'll be based on where you're located. So if you're in Miami, you're going to pay seven or something. Um, if we ship it to Georgia or Alaska, there is no sales tax collected by Emory Thompson. So unlike Macy's, we don't have stores in every state so we don't have to collect the sales tax. Adds up to a lot. Now how much of this do we add? I'm going to weigh it first, see what we have here. First we'll tear it. Know what that means? Okay. Okay, the answer is, <laughs> we're gonna add all of this. This is just under three pounds of Butterfinger bars. I checked my recipe for Butterfinger ice cream, and let me make sure of this. Uh, I think it was six pounds of bars, so we're using a half batch here, so we'll use three pounds of, why are you frowning? No. Okay, so we'll use three pounds <laughs> Butterfinger. Six pounds in a 24 quart. So therefore we will use this. This is going to be, I can tell it's going to be good. Look at all this stuff. Amuse the crowd while I'm doing this. <laughs> It's 
sorry. Um, 8,650 plus shipping. It's the best storage in the world because it's um, it's so incredibly cold. If you're a fisherman, you put some fresh trout in there and they're gonna be good for six months. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Or beef, anything that you want, you know, super, super cold. <laughs> nope. Okay, uh, just for the edification of the class, how hard or complicated was it to clean up at the end of the day, as far as the machine? Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Uh, and that's what you want to do. It's a great feeling when you finish cleaning up and the machine, they did an amazing job yesterday. That machine glistened. Uh, and at, when you're done and you've sanitized it, sealed it up, washed everything, sanitized it, it takes probably 20 minutes, which is certainly no big deal. I've got it down to about eight minutes because it's, it's, some people don't do it. They don't take the door off every night and clean it. They don't take the gasket in here off and clean it. They don't, uh, they don't do all the things that I think should be done and then their product suffers and the machine suffers. This is the heartbeat. This is like that Corvette engine that you just bought a Corvette around. Uh, you know, you just want it to, when it's closed up at night and it's sanitized, and then you come in the next day, it's a whole different ball game. Now I have somebody I know who operates an extremely successful store in South Florida, selling only cream ice. And he has two Emory Thompson 44 quart machines. And he pays people at night to run them almost round the clock. He has about 150 flavors of cream <coughs> ice every day on an electronic board in the store. And <coughs> when I was there, the machines were not clean. But that's your decision, you know. And as far as the employees, they'll follow your lead. So that's it. It's not hard to clean it. Nobody does the door every night. And the door is like fun, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> who is it trying to get it? Uh, you. No, he's not here. No, he's not oh, okay. Here. Not here. okay. Uh, it's a knack, but you know, you just gotta pay attention, but it's okay. Let's see what this stuff tastes like now that it's mixed up. What are you reading? Uh, one of my own formulas. I'm really impressed by it. I'm impressed by my formula for grape nuts. <laughs> Why are we going to loop this tape about how I don't want to do this. It smells, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to. You can have her. She's too fat for me. Yeah. And most of them selling like a restaurant by the gallon? I have most of them doing what I showed you this morning using the six liter pan. Uh, a gallon is uh, too much space to take up. It's also too much waste because these are not coming back to you. Right. There's not a chef on earth who's going to wash your containers and keep them in his overly tight kitchen. So you need a way to distribute them like those plastic inserts from gelato supply that uh, to be I able to I felt like do it that. was too watery. Uh, uh, I don't think anyone's ever made Butterfinger cream ice water. before. Well, it's always ice cream. cream. What they sell so, uh, uh, yeah, just about. So I felt that it should be a little more, a little more body to it. No. What? Uh, I went over this with, July, uh, with uh, Malcolm. Only for this, but you feel as though need more body. Beach from New York, you're getting 40 Hey, I'm just talking this. <laughs> you were certainly a good addition to the class. 
How about those two guys who came in at one o'clock? <laughs> yeah. The question over here uh, is for me. What? Which would you rather sell, a uh, gelato pan to a restaurant or individual scoops, and why? I don't understand. Would you? What would you rather sell in your business? You're in the ice cream business. Would you rather sell those six-liter gelato pans to a restaurant? or the contents of that six liter pan in scoops. And How why? would you do that? How would you sell it in scoops? One scoop at a time. How are you going to do that to a restaurant? I don't understand. <laughs> well, he's just saying, would two, you rather two sell separate a businesses. shop or to Retail a or wholesale? Which would oh, you take? Okay. Well, well, Jeff's yeah, answer. I gave you my take on wholesale. wholesale. But you promote wholesale a lot of times, right? In addition to a very strong retail. Okay. I mean, if someone's knocking down your door begging you to do it, and you can get Forty dollars a gelato pan. Why not? I'll tell you I don't why go. Not. I don't go out and look for it because I want the retail. Yeah. You would. You would rather have a scoop shop than to try and then start out selling to restaurants and other suppliers. Restaurants don't pay their bills. And don't they have forget, every. They have every excuse on, uh, under the sun why they won't pay their bills. When you sell wholesale, that's one reason. You've got to chase the money. But the the big reason is you're losing your identity. You're selling what your baby to a company that doesn't really care about it. They don't take care of the product. It's oftentimes not your name on it anymore. And you're making less money than retail. Uh, you're going to sell a gallon for $40. Well, why do that? Um, it's also going to be icy because they're not going to take oh, proper right. They don't take of care of it. They leave they the cover have... off of it. What if I sold it in a four-ounce individual container with a lid? And that's like, it's got my label on it. They have to sell Restaurant's it not going to sell I'm sorry. It. I don't want to go to a fancy restaurant and right. be handed a Dixie cup. Right. Hand I, the I Dixie won't do, cup. I won't eat it. I won't do it. Tell me why. Why would you want to do it? Uh, why would I? I mean, I just want to sell the ice cream, but for the restaurant, uh, we need some I don't sugar. know. I, I think, think it's a high-level restaurant. It's like a barbecue place. Maybe they what? have an ice you need cream sugar. from just stop. Some local show. You're on gelato. I no, I shut it. Okay. Sorry. Why am I on gelato? Who I have, changed this machine? I used it last. Oh, well, come on. <laughs> gelato? Well, see. You sound why like were you Paula. Playing, I'm why sorry. Are you playing I'm sorry with I didn't put the seat. Still says gelato. I'm sorry I didn't put the seat back. Change it to, to ice cream. Speed is right, but it still says gelato. All right, you're okay. okay. So, in my opinion, wholesale is not what I want to do. You may want to do it. It's not what I want to do. The whole joy, and you, you guys saw it in the store the other day, the whole joy is that people coming in and you serving them ice cream and them being happy and, and you get that feedback right away, you get the money right away, everything works. I don't know, just, just me. All right, so what else? I did add another quart of uh, dairy to this because when I tasted it, it was thin in my opinion. It was a little watery. I'm gonna try it again. That's better. I still think it's gonna be better as ice cream, but so be it. It'll taste like uh, Butterfingers. Start over. When all, when all else fails, reboot. Yeah, I'm sorry, I messed you up. <laughs> That's all right. And are you really sorry? No. Happy you got going again. <laughs> Homemade. Yeah, it was. Um, All right. Any other questions before? Yes. From a sales mix perspective, what do you say your base flavors are compared to like your custom flavors? Your vanilla, chocolate, strawberries. No. For years, I never sold vanilla ice cream, yeah. and I still don't. Well, now we sell chocolate, but it's it's not your regular chocolate. I don't know. I just, uh, I want to be, I, want, I serve a flavor, to give you an example, peanut butter and jelly ice cream. It's peanut butter ice cream, crunchy peanut butter ice cream, and there's a variegate, a swirl of Welsh's grape jelly running through it. Uh, nobody else has that. Even Oreo cookie, everyone sells Oreo cookie ice cream. Well, I didn't want to sell what everyone else has, so I added pieces of Nestle Crunch Bar in it and call it Oreo Crunch. 
Uh, everyone has cheesecake ice cream, uh, strawberry cheesecake ice cream, cherry cheesecake ice cream. I made turtle cheesecake ice cream with <coughs> cheesecake ice cream with caramel and fudge running through it. Uh, I just, I don't, you know, it's, you'll have fun with this. Uh-oh, the dogs are in. <laughs> the dogs are in. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> Come on, Sammy. You don't give up, do you? Everybody, Paula Thompson. I mean, this. Go ahead. We sell uh, no Italian ice, but we sell some cream ice. We sell an adult flavor cream ice, cherry amaretto. We made that the other day, right? Yeah. Cherry amaretto. Yeah. And that's whew, way out there. It's very good. Uh, we have a separate board for adult flavors and regular flavors. And obviously, it, there's a sign on there over 21 for the adult flavors. Uh, soon, we're going to be making pina colada. Uh, which is obviously orange, pineapple, coconut, and rum. Uh, we make a, a world famous coconut ice cream called Totally Coconut, and soon we're going to make a coconut rum ice cream. Uh, but it's, you know, look, I got to tell you, everybody starts with my book. There's 20, 25 recipes, and everybody starts with those. But it doesn't take you long to say, ooh, what if I, ooh, how about if we add, ooh, what if we don't? And that's great. Those two kids in the back, from San Diego and New Jersey, they are understanding how great owning your own ice cream place is. It's unlike anything else. It's not like you're selling computer chips or ladies' shoes or curtain rods or anything else because of that one element. There's two elements that you don't get in all of your jobs right now, art and fun. And if you can add art and fun into a job that pays you enormous amounts of money, uh, you got it made, don't you? So, you know, do it. Get, get it made. It's, it's, a, it's a future for your family, that's for sure. Because when you are all old, like me, you're going to turn it over to your kids, who will chomp at the bit to get this. Ooh, I get Grandpa's ice cream store to run. They may run it into the ground, but hey, you left a legacy. What do kids know, right? Well, another aspect of that is, um, and I hate to th really say this, but we do very well in a recession. The ice cream business is thrives in a recession. Oh, uh, there is no recession for ice cream. Yeah, there is no recession. Uh, they do very well because I do well on machines because people have hit their 40s and they've been fired three, four, five times or let go or downsized, whatever polite word they want to use, but they're out of a job. And they just throw up their hands and say, that's it, honey, we're going to go work for ourselves. And they are highly motivated. They're going to make the business work, and they're wildly successful. Why it works, though, is just like coming out of the, it's identical to coming out of the COVID virus. Uh, people had been cooped up um, in their house, and they wanted to get out. And the place they wanted to go was a bar to get a beer with friends or an ice cream parlor with the family. Well, once the COVID is over, uh, and if a recession ever sets in, which sometime in your life it will, I've been through, through three or four of them, um, you're, you're not cooped up in the house, but you're economically cooped up. You can't afford to go out to dinner with the family. You can't afford to go to a movie. But you can always afford to go uh, to get an ice cream. And uh, it becomes, you know, maybe you don't do it you know, three times a week, but it becomes a special treat. Jeff and I were talking this morning about pricing and a size of a, a scoop. And it really comes down to this, a $20 bill. If a father uh, and his wife and two kids can go into your ice cream parlor and everybody gets a nice big portion of ice cream and it costs them one of these, uh, that's great. He feels very proud that he was able to pay for that. The kids have a nice time. If you happen to be able to add in the picture window and make ice cream on uh, Friday or Saturday night, that's great too. Um, uh, it becomes very important. And, and just on the money part of it, Jeff and I were discussing that if some bean counter convinces you to raise your price from $5 a scoop to $6, uh, now he's clumping out, he's doling out $24.
Well, that's that's a that's a t uh, twenty, and oh, I got one, and another five. Um, and I'm making a point here. <laughs> if they weren't stuck together, uh, so now he's got to dole out two of these, a twenty and a five. And so the next time it happens, he's thinking to himself, "Well, I don't know, honey. That's that's, that's a lot of money because it's no longer just one bill." It's, it's two large bills. It's a 20 and a five. And then it starts to hurt. So $5, we would have said a few years ago, was outrageous. Jeff didn't, but I would have. Uh, but the fact is, you increase the size of the portion to uh, five ounces instead of three, and they're getting a really nice uh, frozen dessert at an affordable price. Oh, and that $20 bill in your accounting includes taxes. So maybe it would come down to like 1946 plus tax. Don't ever give up the taxes. You've got to pay the taxes to the state, otherwise they come after you and that's not worth it. Um, but that $20 bill is magical and you'll do very well in, in bad times because uh, we always, ha you know, you know, they came up with an expression, what was it, 2008 we had some kind of uh, shortage of gas and, also, and it was in the summer, and everybody talked about it. They made up a new term, which was really cool. They called it, I'm taking a staycation. Anybody remember that? That was where you stayed home and just used everything that was nearby you, the parks, the, the river, the ocean, if you had an ocean. Uh, you, you had a staycation. You took a, the, the worst of all possible times and then turned it into something good. And McDonald's is, it can easily be $30. It's very expensive. But, and it's just junky food. People would rather have your spectacular ice cream. It's a real treat. I mean, uh, you know, no, nobody, no dad screams, hey, kids, let's go to Taco Bell. Sorry, Taco Bell, but, you know, we're not that interested. They say, but you say, hey, let's go uh, down to Jeff's homemade ice cream, and now you're talking some excitement. So uh, we're a very safe, stable business to be in. And yes, if you needed to, you could always expand into other areas, ices, dairy-free, some wholesale. Um, be careful of your ego. Don't let your ego get you. Uh, as soon as Whole Foods, as soon as someone says you ought to be in Whole Foods, everybody's in Whole Foods. That's their MO. That's their modus operandi of let everybody in, and then the economy shakes out who's good and who's bad. So if you survive two months, they'll let you into another store for another two months. Maybe after a year, you're in six stores, and your ego, you're scratching the head out here that you're calling me up and ordering 10 machines when you don't need them. And I'm going to tell you, you don't need them. Don't overexpand. Uh, so stick to the mon pause. They may not be as glamorous, but if you had on wholesale, if you had six so mon like pa delicatessens uh, or convenience stores or specialty food shops selling your pints of ice cream, that's great advertising. Ma and Pa love you. They're making $2 a pint, you're making $4 a pint, and the customer is getting a product that he really loves. I failed to mention that earlier today, but the Ma and Pa specialty shops are a great way to expand your brand. And it's not going to be ruined by the waitress or the, the waiter uh, serving your ice cream in Le Pantier. It's going to be um, taken care of by Ma and Pa, and they love you that there is no two-week uh, lead time and, and a ton, big ten tub minimum, like haagen -Dazs. They call you up Friday afternoon. Hey, we just ran out of mint chip and it's gonna be a big weekend. Don't worry about it, I'll run them over to you. And that counts for more advertising than you could ever do. They're gonna love you. So there are ways to expand the business. And here comes the product. I'm gonna use this machine, Jeff, for my final flavor. No. Um, gelato is a very interesting subject. Uh, I know a lot about it because this cabinet is made by uh, Capigiani, my frenemy, uh, one of their companies. They own about 70 companies. And I needed a hardening cabinet, they needed a sales outlet, so we got together and said we might be competitors, but we have a great idea. So I have a lot of knowledge of, of them and Thanks. their product. <laughs> Their gelato batch freezers sell all over Europe, used to be all over the world, but it's shrinking quickly. Americans, uh, Americans have American-style ice cream with lots of cookies and candies and stuff in it, um, and we, we want uh, 
that's the kind of product we sell. Uh, American ice cream is more popular now in uh, Africa, uh, the Middle East, Asia, um, not so much in, in South America because a lot of it came, them came from Italy and Europe. Uh, but the majority of people in the world want American style ice cream. And uh, so gelato technically was a fad. It came in the 90s. It almost wiped out my company because I had Gelaterias. Yeah, I hadn't invented the infant overrun control yet, so I uh, couldn't take my machines down slow enough. Now I can. It's been 23 years. Um, and uh, everybody was going to Europe and saying, oh, the gelato, oh, it's fantastic. And I'm a wise ass. I would say, so let me ask you a question. I got the th number third, th third Avenue mugger mover subway out my back window in the Bronx. And I said, where does a Heineken beer taste better? Does it taste better underneath the 3rd Avenue L, or that stands for elevated, the 3rd Avenue L, or does it taste better uh, on a Caribbean island? Well, it always tastes better on, on an island. And, it tastes, and so the gelateria tastes better when you're on vacation in Italy. Uh, that point didn't always fly, but the, the, the real point was it's not what Americans eat. So I do very little uh, in gelato, and I'm selling more machines than anybody. So I can make gelato, I would do some gelato, but my, I guess my biggest point is 38-year-old mother walks through the door. She's got her five-year-old daughter with her, and I can guarantee you that daughter is not pulling on her mother's dress saying, Mommy, can I please have a tiramisu? That's not happening. The kid wants, the child wants uh, moose tracks, mint chip, uh, Oreo cookie. And a big danger in business is selling what you want to sell instead of what's going to sell. I mean, if you want to sell a product that you're convinced on, uh, you'll be very happy in business, but you'll be broke. You've got to sell what the public wants. That's extremely important.